The Eve Arden Show. Starring Eve Arden. Co-starring Alan Jocelyn. From Lieber House in New York City comes the greatest skin care discovery of our time. Its name is Dove. This amazing new bath and toilet bar is actually one quarter cleansing cream. Every bar of new Dove is one quarter cleansing cream. Ordinary soap dries your skin, but Dove creams your skin while you wash. Make this simple test. Wash one half of your face with soap, any soap. Rinse thoroughly. And then notice how dry your skin feels after using soap. Now wash the other half of your face with amazing new Dove. No after feeling of dryness now. Your skin has a velvety, just creamed feeling. That's because Dove creams your skin while you wash. Lever Brothers guarantees that Dove is better for your skin than any soap or your money back. Dove creams your skin while you wash. Your mother's out shopping. Grandma, look at this picture. Where did you get a trashy picture like this? We took it away from Jonathan Bellows at the candy store. What is a seven and a half year old boy doing with a picture like this? And what kind of a girl would pose for a picture like that? Mother would, that too. <laughs> it's <lying. laughs> Sure, it's mother's book. And it's mother's picture. Summer's End. My story by Liza Hammond. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, but I'm busy tonight and tomorrow night and the next night, too. Thank you very much. <laughs> that elevator man. Liza, I want to talk to you. Well, so does everyone else in the whole neighborhood. I think they've gone crazy. What do you mean? Well, first Melvin, the vegetable man, threw in several extra heads of lettuce. <laughs> and then he winked. <laughs> then Fred, the garage man, complimented me on my chassis, and he winked. <laughs> then Mr. Schwartz, the butcher, positively leered at me over the calf's liver. <laughs> I don't understand it. Uh, girls, I I'd like to have a word with your mother. Oh, can't we stay? I'd like to hear Mother get a talking to from her mother. <laughs> Go on, girls, and here, take the groceries. Nice. Look at that. Why, that's my book. Why, that's me. But it isn't me. That's not my sweater. I never had a white sweater. And those are not my legs. I'll swear those are not my legs. Boy, I wish they were my legs. Why, this whole thing is a fake, Mother. They put my head on somebody else's leg. Oh. Oh, you'd better get it, Mother. Mr. Schwartz threatened to deliver the calf's liver personally. <laughs> oh, George, come in. Hello, Nora. <laughs> George, that is not my picture. They always claim that. Liza, you ought to wear that white sweater more often. <laughs> George, I intend to issue a public denial. I'm sorry, but it's just not me. I'm terribly sorry it's not me. <laughs> You're not denying anything. We're cashing in on that picture no matter who it is. Liza, I've been trying to build you up as a lecturer for the George Howell Lecture Bureau. Now, so far, your public's been limited to... Ladies auxiliaries and garden clubs. Now you've got a whole new audience. Ooh. I've already had calls from the Cattlemen's Convention <laughs> and the West Side Boxing Club. Well, they're not interested in me. Send them the picture. Oh, that picture. <laughs> Would Liza autograph a copy for me? Just the top part. Oh, George. <laughs> 
Brewster Publishing Company. Let me speak to Mr. Brewster. Mr. Brewster, this is Liza Hammond. I've just seen the paperback copy of my novel, and I am appalled. I want you to take it out of circulation right away. You what? Things aren't bad enough. I'm going to be cheesecake from coast to coast. <laughs> He's just sent out 100,000 more copies. And if I know contracts, you can't stop them. Oh, that dirty little fine print. <laughs> you, you what? You'd like me to... Well, who is David Ferris? What has your old army buddy got to do with me? Besides, I never accept a blind date. Well, introduce him to the other half of the picture. <laughs> I cannot stop him. Mr. Ferris or Mr. Brewster? Mr. Brewster. Mr. Ferris is his old army buddy who saw my picture and wants to meet me. Oh, this is ridiculous. Well, why is it ridiculous? Mr. Brewster's a very nice man, and I'm sure his old army buddy is too. Old army buddies don't go on dates. They go on maneuvers. <laughs> I don't think you should go on a blind date. It wouldn't be fair. He saw the picture. He's expecting an exciting, glamorous, sophisticated femme fatale. And you wouldn't want to disappoint him. That's right. When he finds out what you're really like, he'll... <clears throat> Go on. Or did your mother teach you never to talk with a mouth full of foot? <laughs> Nora, please, tell her what I mean. Well, he means that you're intelligent. Yes, you have a wonderful personality. And an interesting literary style. A fine grasp of current events. In other words, I'm a square. <laughs> oh, Liza, we all love you, but let's face it. You've turned into a girl who wears sensible shoes. <laughs> sensible shoes? I do... I... <laughs> well, at least I don't wear service weight stockings. <laughs> all right, so they're not the sheerest. Liza, I didn't mean... I know exactly what you mean. You think I'm too dreary to interest a man. Well, let me tell you something, George Howell. I've had all sorts of exciting and sophisticated men pleading with me for dates. In fact, I've been turning them down all day. That's right, Melvin the Vegetable Man. <laughs> The garage man and Mr. Schwartz. Mother, who counts? I, I, I'm not really worried about your accepting blind dates. You have a psychological block which intercepts all stimuli on a romantic level. Meaning what? Meaning you're chicken. <laughs> I'm chicken, am I? Well, just for that, I'm going to take him up on that blind date. I'll show you who's chicken. My feathers may be ruffled, and I may be squawking a little, but I am not chicken. <laughs> Hello, this is Liza Hammond. May I speak to Mr. Rooster? Oh, Mommy! Woo, Liza! Boy, do you look sensational! Maybe I'd better go back in and change. <laughs> but here you look lovely. What's that perfume you're wearing? Oh, it's something new I bought this afternoon. It's called Sincerely Yours. Well, did you buy it in a stationery store? <laughs> Why don't you use some of my ecstatic embrace? Ecstatic embrace? Why, Mother? Or how about some of our sudden love? Sudden love? Sure, we made it. Out of rose petals and vanilla extract. <laughs> that ought to attract the boys. Say nothing of the bees and the flies. <laughs> what time is Mr. Ferris calling for you? Oh, he isn't. I said I'd meet him downtown at the Silver Fox restaurant at 8.30. Well, for heaven's sakes, why didn't you have him meet you here? Well, I wanted to drive my own car, that's why. I talk pretty big when I let George insult me into making this date, but let's face it, Mother. A man who wants to meet a woman from a cheesecake photograph has got to be a wolf. And have you ever watched a pack of wolves devour cheesecake? <laughs> but how are you going to recognize him? Oh, I won't have to. He'll recognize me from my photograph. Well, it won't be easy with all those clothes on. <laughs> all right, Mother, that's enough. Well, goodbye, all. Oh, goodbye, you and have a lovely time. Thanks. Goodbye, Jenny. Bye, Mom. Have fun. Thanks. Goodbye, Mary. Goodbye, Mother. Have a good time. Thank you. Well, I'll be home in time for the 10 o'clock news. <laughs> oh, uh, Mother, are my seams straight? Yes, they're fine, dear. They're fine. Now, goodbye. Oh, Liza, you're behaving like a schoolgirl on her first date. George is right. 
You're a chicken. You're a square chicken. <laughs> that does it. Good evening, ma'am. You've seen me. Well, aren't you Liza Hammond? Yes, that's right. Oh, I thought so. I bought your book. Oh, uh -huh. did you enjoy it? Oh, very much. And I haven't even got past the cover. <laughs> well, it's not really meant to be read. It's more of a pin-up book. <laughs> Say, isn't that Liza Hammond, the writer? I don't think so. Of course it is. I saw her picture. But she looks so harmless. I'm going to get her autograph. Uh, Miss Hammond? Oh, I'm so glad you're here. I recognize you right away from your picture. Oh, from my picture? Well, just forget that. After all, cheesecake is only skin deep, you know. <clears throat> Table for two, sir? Why, yes, but I... So I was told there'd be at least a half hour wait. Oh, not for any friend of Liza Hemp. That's this wonderful. Thank you. Oh, he means right in here. Oh, Follow me, please. There must be some mistake. Oh, no, there's no mistake. He's giving us a table because he read my picture, too. <laughs> no, really, you see, I... Uh, uh, I look, was... Couldn't we just sit down Eugene, over here? What do you think you're doing? I beg your pardon? What are you doing with my husband? Your husband? You're married. How dare you? How, how dare you ask me out to dinner? I didn't ask you out to dinner. I just wanted your autograph. Couldn't you just scribble your name without playing a big fat love scene? Come, you see. I'm I'm so sorry, Miss Hammond. Oh, it's all right. Would you mind letting me out of the arena? I've decided not to fight the bull. <laughs> Excuse me. I beg your pardon, but you are Liza Hammond, aren't you? Oh, I... I'm David Ferris. I recognized you right away from your picture. Oh, you did? Yes. You did? Oh, you're David Ferris. <laughs> oh, hello, Mr. Ferris. How do you do? It was nice of you to accept my invitation for dinner. Oh, it's... I'm delighted. Uh, shall we go in? Yes. Right. Now that we've met, may I say I find you even more attractive than your photograph? Oh, thank you. Would you uh, mind putting that in writing? I'd like to show it to a couple of skeptics. <laughs> With pleasure. After dinner. <laughs> they right. say the cheesecake here is wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hello, George. Come in. Oh, Nora. Oh, how lovely. Yes, there's nothing like a single red rose to cheer up a woman. Why does Liza need cheering up? Well, she must have had a miserable time last night. Where is she? She's still sleeping. But it's almost noon. She's usually at her typewriter by nine. Is she ill? Well, she didn't get in until after four. Four? A.M.? Well, she has a speech to write before next week. She can't sleep through these working hours. Is that the doorbell, Mother? Oh, hi, George. Oh, Liza. Look, Liza, these roses came for you a few minutes ago. Oh, how lovely. Did you send them, George? Is there a card? <laughs> yes, there is. No, I didn't. <laughs> oh, how sweet. It's from David Ferris. I'll put them in the vase. Thank you, Mother. Liza, you've got work to do. What were you doing out until four? Oh, having the most wonderful evening I remember in years. Dinner, soft music, you know. No, I don't know. From eight until four, that's a lot of dinner and soft music. <laughs> well, we saw a wonderful floor show first. I watched the show, and David watched me. David? Oh, you mean Mr. Ferris? Ferris. All right, all right. So you were the glamour girl of Manhattan. Uh, get dressed. We're due right now at the Washington Heights Nature Club. <laughs> <laughs> 
Who is? <laughs> Mr. Wicks wants to have lunch with you. Well, David asked me first, and I accepted. I'm meeting him downtown. Is he trying to make a production out of a casual meeting? Who said it was casual, except you? <laughs> Look, Liza, the man saw your picture. He, he took you to dinner, he had some cocktails and spent the evening. Then he realized you weren't the girl in the picture, and that was the end of it. On to Washington Heights. <laughs> well, that wasn't the end of it at four o'clock this morning. I had to shut the door in David's face in an awful hurry. Oh? Well, if he was so interested, he'd be picking you up here. Oh, let's face it, Liza. Finish. Over. The end. Washington Heights. <laughs> Let's face it, just beginning. Going on right now, lunch with David. All right, forget about your career. Go have lunch with him. Well, wait a minute. You're meeting him... You're meeting him downtown. Uh-huh. Well, that explains a lot. He isn't coming to the house because you're afraid he might run into your family. Liza, tell me, uh, does he know that your mother lives with you? Does he know you have two 13-year-old daughters? He doesn't even know I have a George. <laughs> well, if you'll pardon me, I'll slip into something divine for David. <laughs> Isn't it nice to see Liza so happy? Yeah. You know, this Ferris fella strikes me as the type who'd get bald very young. <laughs> George, I think you're jealous. No, I'm not. Just don't want her to be hurt, that's all. When Ferris finds out she has a family, he'll run like a thief. Oh, how would you know that? I used to be a pretty fair sprinter myself. <laughs> hello. Oh, who is this? Why, hello, Mr. Ferris. <laughs> oh, George Howell, an old family friend of Liza's. She's dressing. Uh, she wanted me to ask you if you'd mind picking her up here. You wouldn't? Oh, that's fine. All right. Goodbye, Mr. Ferris. <laughs> I mean, goodbye. George, was that the phone? Yes, it was Mr. Ferris. He can't meet you downtown. He'll pick you up here. Oh. Uh, Liza, where are the girls? They're down the hall at Betty McKee's apartment. Betty has a hi-fi and two brothers. To Mary and Jenny, that's catnip. <laughs> Betty McKee, Betty McKee. We'll get them up here and then we'll see. David Ferris. Is Miss Hammond here? Oh, she'll be ready in a minute. Come in, come in. Thank you. I'm George Howell, head of the Howell Lecture Bureau. Oh, yes, I talked to you on the telephone. Uh, you're Miss Hammond's old friend. Yes, and you're Mr. Brewster's old, old friend. <laughs> well, not that old, please. <laughs> Liza's told all of us about you. All of us? Yes. Oh, I forgot. You haven't met the rest of our large group. Well, I was under the impression that Liza lived alone. Liza lived alone? Oh, oh, oh no. Nora! Yes? What is it, Joe? Oh. Uh, Nora. Nora, uh, I'd like to present Mrs. Martin. How do you do? Liza's mother. Uh, Nora is Mr. Ferris. Oh, you're not at all like a blind date. <laughs> George, you're wrong. He's got a lovely head of hair. <laughs> So, uh, you're Liza's mother? Mm-hmm. I was married very young. <laughs> mother lives with Liza. Yes. After Liza became a widow six years ago, I dropped in for a weekend, and I liked it. <laughs> oh. oh, so Liza... Liza's a widow. Do you think David will like this, Mother? David will love it. Hello, David. Hello, Liza. It was nice of you to ask me to drop by. I did? <laughs> well, uh, your friend Mr. Howell was kind enough to convey the message. Oh, how sweet. I try to be helpful. Uh, <laughs> I think your mother's charming. A and I like uh, your friend Mr. Howell. So, oh, uh, Mr. Howell, uh, may I call you George? Oh, of course. Uh, George? Yes, Liza. May I call you Mr. Howell? <laughs> 
Liza, I think we'd better be going. I have a reservation for lunch. Oh. Oh, please don't go just yet. Why not? Well, somebody unexpected might drop in. Somebody like who? How would I know if they're unexpected? <laughs> no, I think I understand. George has arranged for my twins to drop in. Well, they might stop by. Everybody wanted to meet David. Y your twins? Mary and Jenny, age 13. I'd like to meet them. Well, I'd love you to, David. In fact, if George hadn't beaten me to it, I was going to tell you about the family at lunch. Well, you have no idea how expensive 13-year-old girls are. <laughs> lessons and dancing? Yes, party dresses, summer camps. Toothpaste, laundry, food. I'm beginning to get the idea. <laughs> well, David, now that George has completed his expose, shall we go? Uh, I think we'd better. <laughs> Goodbye. Oh, uh, I'll see you again, Miss Martin. Drop in any time, even if Liza isn't here, and we can have a cup of coffee. Oh, thank you. That would be very nice. Goodbye. Uh, <coughs> Mr. Howell, uh, what did you say you were the head of a... Uh, Information Bureau? <laughs> Lecture Bureau. Oh. Mother, the girls may have dinner at Betty McKee's. Oh, and if I'm late, you fix yourself something. George, if you get hungry... Yes, Liza? Have Mother fry some of that nice egg that's on your face. <laughs> Past four. What kind of lunch is this? <laughs> you know, this never would have happened if it wasn't for that silly-looking picture. Well, don't let it bother you, George. You won't have to spend much time with Mr. Ferris. He certainly can't be serious about her. N well, not on such short acquaintance. Still, I should have gone along with them. Oh, I don't think you'd like a punch in the nose, George. <laughs> <laughs> From that character? From Liza. <laughs> Hello, Mother. Oh, hi, Liza. Girls! Uh, now that you've descended to Earth again, tell us about your trip to the moon. <laughs> oh, I didn't go to the moon. Instead, I went to Saks Fifth Avenue and bought myself the sharpest pair of lounging pajamas I could find. Oh, oh Mommy! Those are Lots neat! Girls. Take them in my room, will you? And please don't try them on. Liza, what happened? Well, first David bought some champagne. As a farewell gesture? No, to celebrate. And then he asked me to marry him. It's a cad. <laughs> Liza! Mother, how'd you like to have a big, fancy apartment on Park Avenue? Oh, I think we could be happy anywhere, dear. And uh, not we, you. David thinks you ought to have a place of your own. Oh, well, that's very generous of him. How do you think the girls would like going to boarding school in Switzerland? <laughs> Switzerland? Well, he's given us a great deal of thought, hasn't he? George, do you think you could arrange me some bookings in uh, Europe and South America? Europe? South America? Well, David wants to travel. Well, if that's what you want, Liza, I guess I can. My contacts are worldwide. I always try to accommodate all my clients, no matter how ungrateful she may be. <laughs> I turned him down. You... What did you say? I said I turned him down. What's the good of having a family if you're going to spread it all over the globe? Well, I, I hope you didn't turn him down just because of... us. <laughs> oh, no. David wanted to marry the perpetual glamour girl. I have sensible shoes, a mother, and two children, and they're all pretty well broken in. <laughs> oh, and of course, one other little thing. I wasn't in love with him. So I said, no, thank you. Oh, Liza, you turned him down. How wonderful for your ego. <laughs> well, uh, I guess I'll go and see how the girls look in those lounging pajamas. <laughs> oh, Mother. If you're thinking of trying them on, be careful of the seams, dear. You know something, Liza? You're beginning to look more and more like that picture. Well, I'm a slow developer. <laughs> I'll pick you up at eight for dinner. Business conference? Not necessarily. Oh, George. Well, I think I'll go and start getting ready right now. Oh, and George. Call the Cattlemen's Convention and the West Side Boxing Club. 
I'm available. And now a word from our alternate sponsor, Sholton. Here's a little shaver watching a big shaver shave. He's just marking time till he can shave like Dad does. That's Old Spice Smooth Shave Dad's using in the new foolproof pressurized container. You just press a button and out comes rich, velvety lather. Ah, does that Old Spice smell nice? Just look at that fine, full foam. Here's what it does for you. Softens that sensitive skin, moistens that stubborn beard. Just watch that razor glide along. No pull or drag. Even the toughest whiskers become weak and willing. In just a few minutes, you've got the cleanest, smoothest shave ever. That's Old Spice Smooth Shave by Shulton. Only one dollar. Or try new formula Old Spice Lather Shaving Cream, 65 cents. Or new formula Old Spice Brushless Shaving Cream, 60 cents. Shave any way you choose. As long as it's a shave by Shulton, you get shaving pleasure beyond measure. <laughs> make you look even more glamorous. Oh, how sweet. Here, have a cigarette. Oh, thank you, dear, but I don't use a holder. Try it anyway. Casually. <laughs> Casually. <laughs> like this? <laughs> now, what else? Now, if you'll <coughs> just lie back and put your feet up, because it's almost 8 o'clock. What happens at 8 o'clock? I turn into a pumpkin? At 8 o'clock, Betty McKee's brothers are coming over. And so is little Jonathan Bellows. Oh, how nice. And you want me sitting here like this? Sure, we're charging them a comic book apiece to look at you. <laughs> a comic book apiece. Well, how do you like that? And I'm using my own legs. <laughs> The Eve Arden Show was brought to you by Dove, the amazing beauty discovery that creams your skin while you wash. Next week's sponsor will be Shulton, makers of Old Spice and other fine toiletries.